initial plan was to talk about venture capital, about uh, education, workforce development, and standards. Unfortunately, uh, since the speaker from the university was not able to join, we will concentrate actually our uh, discussion about venture capital and uh, standards. So maybe first question. So quantum technologies are real uh, hard deep techs. There are a lot of difficulties for uh, private sector uh, that ident we identified to invest in uh, quantum technolo uh, technologies. As an investor from uh, Omnes, could you share with us what are uh, uh, the first the first time uh, you uh, uh, you have been in contact with uh, quantum startups? What are the first difficulties, and uh, how finally uh, you decided to uh, in, uh, invest? Thank you, Neil. Yes, of course. So. Maybe to present briefly Omnes Capital, we are um, uh, private equity funds. We are managing something like 5 billion euro and in uh, two fields, in the energy transition, we have a big team dedicated to this and uh, all, as well as in innovation and more precisely, we invest in deep tech, deep uh, technology and we are covering uh, uh, three main areas. So, of course, uh, quantum and uh, which is part of um, let's say, uh, critical next generation uh, infrastructure. We are also investing in TechBio and uh, Qubit uh, Pharmaceuticals is here. So uh, computer aided drug discovery, uh, applied to drug discovery, and uh, as well as uh, sustainability, so more, let's say, decarbonized energy. And uh, so we, we love uh, deep tech companies. And uh, just to maybe to, to make something very clear, we are a private equity fund. So what we are looking at is doing some uh, return on investment to our client, of course. And uh, so and I'm part of the venture capital team and uh, we are okay to take big risk. Uh, if, we, of course, we have a, a huge potential of a return on investment. And it's, of course, a very difficult, uh, let's say, field to, to invest in quantum computing, but we are convinced convinced at Opness that the next technological leader, and I'm pretty convinced that Europe will need this kind of superpower tomorrow, uh, the next technological leader will be uh, super eligible for huge return on investment. So that's why we first at all were looking at quantum computer. And uh, after, after uh, let's say, to, to do some deep tech investment, you have to, to change a little bit the way uh, venture capital uh, work. Before this, we were super, let's say, uh, opportunist, taking uh, some uh, investment opportunity as they, go, as they come. And we, we totally changed our approach to, to do some investment and on more proactive approach. So we, we first try to, be, because it is uh, compulsory if you want to, to invest in deep tech, you really need to deeply uh, understand a technology, their pros, their cons, their, all the competitors, all the, the market, the dynamics, their the M&A uh, intensity, the technological need. Well, you have to do a lot of uh, homework, let's say. And, uh, and uh, of course, for quantum uh, technology, it was a, a, a huge work. And we assess almost every, every company and it takes a few years to do so. And, um, and we finally decided to, to invest in two fields. Uh, first, uh, a full stack quantum computer, because for us it was, uh, uh, let's say, a very interesting field to, to invest in, in terms of a return on investment, uh, as well as in uh, in applicative field, and especially in the, let's say, the most uh, uh, mature one in the, in the drug discovery field. That's why we, and after a huge benchmark, we, almost fall in love with uh, two, two teams, uh, the Candela team, they are an astonishing team, very complete, uh, they are de delivering a lot, and uh, Valerian is here, the CEO, so we decided to invest in this company, and afterward with uh, Qubit Pharmaceuticals, and uh, we have uh, two, uh, two uh, newcomers here, so super happy to, to see you there. Uh, and uh, as well, a super team, uh, e extraordinary uh, capacity to execute. So, and this is, of course, for an investor, the first thing, you, you, the second thing, after uh, having done your due diligence, you, you, you have to invest in an extraordinary team. And in the quantum field, we are astonished by the, the quality of the guy we have in front of us. So, 
this is this is something uh, uh, quite quite easy in fact what is the real problem in in, in quantum uh, computing in fact because so you invest in high technology in an incredible team but in the end we have to exit to exit and to do so in quantum computing you have some difficulties what are the exit options for us in fact what are the exit options it's not obvious and what is in fact the the capacity to refinance company i take the candela example because i know i know them very well uh, they are competing they are doing uh, extraordinary well and that they are competing against who against guys like psy quantum like zanadu they raise almost a billion cumulative in a cumulative uh, sorry i have a background so they are competing against guys that are super well financed and in in uh, europe if you want to do so to have a super leader in uh, quantum computing we need to have this kind of uh, dry powder on the table we need to have this kind of uh, cash available and uh, when you want to raise 100 million for example it's um it's not that easy especially if you want to to find a fi uh, financing uh, possibility in europe where do you want to go if you want to raise 100 million euro in europe you have uh, two options bpi france they are doing extraordinary work honestly and uh, european uh, investment bank and eic same thing they are doing great but when they put one one euro on the table they want another one euro on the table from a privately managed equity fund and who in Europe is capable to put a 30 or 40 million euro check in a, uh, in a, uh, in a quantum company? Honestly, I don't know. Super complicated. Super complicated. So what are, are you going, what are we going to do? We are going to see uh, Temasek guys, Mubadala, uh, BSMR. Okay. So we are talking about, uh, European super strategic issue, super strategic problem. We want to build the next European uh, superpower in quantum, but we will finance our company with uh, Temasek and uh, come on. So the huge problem is we need to have a dry powder on the table, a lot of amount of cash with super uh, powerful uh, VC in Europe and as of and not only in Series A or Series B, but up to the uh, IPO. Okay. Me, for example, let's take, a, uh, and I will conclude like this, huh? uh, Candela for the exit opportunity. Uh, can, can we do, uh, honestly, right now, an IPO in Europe? No, it's, it's impossible. It's possible. The next, the only option they have is to, uh, to go to the NASDAQ. Or, uh, so we are talking about European sovereignty, but we don't have the medium to create this kind of superpower in Europe today. I know you're working ultra uh, hard on this topic and you're doing an astonishing job and it takes time of course but this is uh, an honest answer to what are the difficulties to invest in uh, in uh, in quantum computer today and this is why vc in europe are quite uh, afraid to to jump i will i think it will change uh, drastically in the coming months or years thanks to you <laughs> I think they, I can talk directly there. Yes. Uh, so th thank you for uh, this uh, this view about the, uh, the difficulties. There have been announcements uh, in the um, early of this uh, earlier this year from the European Commission uh, and uh, different state members about a, f a fund of funds to build more than one billion European specialized funds. Do you think that such initiative would help uh, in that? And uh, have you any uh, recommendation for the public uh, of uh, uh, policy officers uh, for for that? Yes, yes, it will help a lot. It will, it, it is compulsory, in fact. And uh, my only advice would be uh, go as quick as possible to make the the cash available to this kind of company. I, I, for for Candela for uh, Qubit, for uh, C12, for uh, all these guys will need uh, to, to, to compete, to, to keep the pace against uh, uh, 
the US guys and, uh, and, uh, and uh, other continent, uh, we will need massive amount of cash. And so my advice would be, uh, this is super, uh, we will need this, but let's try to do it uh, not in two years, but in, uh, in six months. Uh, that's, uh, that would be my only advice. I, I know it's super complex, huh? but uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, my second question uh, would be to Felicien. Felicien, you are leading an initiative about uh, benchmarks, metrics, and uh, standards. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, the French initiative, how it uh, works with uh, other the connection with other initiatives uh, around uh, the world, in, uh, especially in Europe? Uh, give us a first a big picture about that. Yes. Uh, perhaps we have a slide uh, to, to tell uh, a few words about uh, metrics. So the national program on, uh, on measurements, standards, and the evaluation of quantum technologies. Um, yes, okay, we can. Okay, so, so metrics. Um, so this is a national program on measurement standards uh, and evaluation of quantum technologies. And it is part of the uh, French national quantum strategy. And you, you told us a few words about uh, these issues uh, this morning, Neil, during the plenary session. And the main objective of this program is uh, to, to develop, to, to exploit uh, measurement capabilities of reference. I mean um, capabilities which uh, will be validated, harmonized, in order to provide a, a characterization and performance evaluation of the different te quantum technologies. Um, what we especially target is to have measurements that are reliable, that are unbiased, I mean impar impartial, and also uh, that are comparable. So this is very important. And uh, so within this program, uh, we talk about metrology, about test and evaluation, and also about uh, international standardization. So the, 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 the final objective of this program is to provide support to innovation, but also uh, to the establishment of a sound quantum industry. So we are to position to, to, uh, to favor the transfer of the technologies from the lab uh, to, to the industry. And uh, practically speaking, this program metrics will address all the topics which are priorities in the French national quantum strategy. I mean quantum computing, quantum sensing, uh, quantum communication, and also importantly, uh, enabling technologies. Um, also, I, I can give you some details uh, regarding the operation of this program. So we have mainly two parts. The first part is about developing uh, measurement and testing infrastructures. So the idea is to gather all the uh, measurement uh, facilities and capabilities which are available at LNE and in the laboratories of the French Metrology Network which are expected to be reference capabilities. And also the long-term vision is to develop a network of test and characterization facilities at the national scale, but also at the, Euro uh, the European scale. And we have a second part in this uh, metrics program, which is uh, related to uh, research and development uh, to, uh, to develop the uh, measurement capabilities uh, uh, per se. So, this will be done through uh, R&D projects, which will be collaborative. So we will include uh, all the ecosystem, all the different actors of the ecosystem, uh, starting with uh, academic teams in the French national organization, uh, at uh, CNRS, uh, at uh, CA, at INRI, at, at, in, at INRI, sorry, uh, to, to name the, 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 the main ones. And also importantly, we will uh, involve uh, uh, companies the large ones, like uh, Thales and uh, Eviden, and also the SMEs, the startups, which play a very important role in the, in the quantum ecosystem. Uh, re regarding um, normalization, standardization issues, we are, also, uh, we are also supported by AFNOR, which is the French national standardization body, and also uh, we position at the European level and the international level through the dedicated bodies I mean Sensenelec for the European scale and uh, ISO, IEC for uh, uh, the international uh, level. And um, so in this project, we will address different topics. And uh, one of the uh, first topics that uh, uh, we address is the benchmarking of quantum computing. 
and uh, more precisely, uh, application-oriented uh, benchmarks. So I, I think we can uh, then uh, talk about this, uh, this first action uh, within uh, this uh, metrics program. Yes, could you precise a little bit more? And uh, also, uh, how uh, do you would work with other countries uh, with inside this program? I think this is an important uh, question uh, our uh, co uh, colleagues uh, there uh, would, be would be happy to, to, to know. OK, so uh, re regarding uh, the, the project BAC, which is benchmark applicative, uh, pour les calculateurs quantiques in French. <laughs> so the project um, is uh, led by uh, Thales and gathers uh, six partners. And probably uh, I will uh, leave the floor to, to, uh, to Frédéric from Thales to, to describe this, uh, this, uh, this project. Okay, thank you, Felicien. So I have some, uh, some set of slides to uh, introduce back. So as explained by uh, Felicien, back means uh, benchmark applicative des calculateurs quantiques. So uh, application oriented benchmark for quantum computing. And you have the list of partners. So LNE, Thales, uh, Eviden, uh, CEA, CNRS and Terratech. Uh, so it is a global budget of 4 million euros, including uh, 2.5 million euros uh, funded by uh, France 2030. And the main objective is to develop uh, some tools of uh, benchmark uh, and a test bed for this uh, benchmark that we could uh, share and uh, discuss with our partner at uh, European level and also with the QPE provider. So it is coordinated by uh, by Thales uh, with uh, the, the partner. So for CEA, you have three uh, uh, three um, team uh, involved. So List, uh, IPHT, and Felix QS. So in Paris and in, in Grenoble. So it's a three years uh, project. And the main output uh, will be a fast track on Q score that will be presented by Anne uh, Anise. Guillemin on uh, a prototype of application oriented benchmark and also uh, a multi criteria uh, model of uh, this uh, quantum con uh, computer benchmark. So the main goal, as explained by Felicien, is uh, to propose a reliable objective on the long standing uh, measurement instrument uh, and also compliant with uh, the program uh, Metric US. So we have two phases. The first phase is that will be to develop the test bed, so to define the, the metrics on uh, the benchmark. And the second phase to uh, to make available this uh, benchmark and uh, to converge to a, a European consensus to, to use it uh, for different QPU. So our main observation is that the existing, uh, existing uh, benchmark initiative have some uh, main drawbacks that are uh, more, uh, more relative to technical, to technical uh, metrics and uh, so they require some knowledge and uh, this knowledge uh, and skills are, are, are not, uh, is not evident for end users to understand this benchmark. Uh, and so we are uh, an approach which is more end, uh, end user oriented and uh, we will use uh, higher level metrics uh, so that are meaningful for the end users. And also we have decided to use a multi-criteria approach uh, using a tool uh, that has been developed by uh, Thales, which is called Myriad for multi-criteria decision tool uh, because uh, we want to, to mix different kinds of metrics uh, for a ranking and notation of quantum computers. Uh, so, uh, so as explained by Eleni, it's, uh, there is a different uh, objectives. Uh, so, the, uh, uh, to, to, to be transparent and uh, to propose an uh, impartial protocol. Uh, to discuss also to refine the definition of testbed uh, with discussion with the QPU provider, especially. Uh, to maintain a performance list of, uh, of, of our time, uh, which are, will be concerned with the participants. And also to present this material at different uh, instances, uh, like uh, also uh, normalization and standardization. 
uh, and to extend this uh, this dialogue to at European and international uh, level, uh, and so to alimentate discussion on the international standards. So this is uh, the main uh, work break structures. Uh, so we have a work package two, which is dedicated to develop the, the metrics uh, for the test bed. Uh, a work package three, uh, which is more oriented to energetic, uh, energetic metrics, uh, which is led by CNRS, by Alexia Ofev, and related to the quantum energy initiative. And then a work package four, which is for the implementation of the coding of this test. And a work package five, uh, with analysis and first consolidation of uh, results. And to start, uh, we have launched a fast track that will be de uh, developed by uh, Eviden on Q-score, on a different QPU, uh, uh, on different QPU. And during the project, we will have access to uh, TGCC uh, emulators on uh, QPU. Uh, and also, uh, we have a work package one, uh, which is dedicated to consultation on uh, dissemination and expression of results uh, with uh, a very wide interaction with end users on uh, research teams, but also uh, with the uh, QPE providers and also interaction with other international uh, benchmarking initiative. And the output of the project uh, will be the benchmark protocol that will be uh, provided to the LNE, uh, but also some uh, publication uh, explaining the, the protocol on the benchmark, uh, and also some input for uh, for AFNOR for on uh, Sensenelec and all the uh, initiative on the Norman standard. Uh, so we have uh, a planning, and we will try to provide some uh, deliverable uh, for uh, each year. And we have decided to address uh, four uh, problems: uh, one on simulation of quantum physics model uh, by Eviden and CEA; uh, one on optimization by Thales and CEA and Eviden; uh, one on linear system solving by uh, CNRS, CEA and Thales on one on uh, factorization uh, by uh, CEA. So, it's so we, are, we will start with uh, some initial metric provided by our partners. So I will not give all the details by each partner for, uh, for this problem uh, will provide some uh, initial metrics uh, that we'll uh, consider, but we will also uh, make an analysis of the state of the art and uh, integrate uh, more, more uh, most appropriate uh, metrics in the project. Uh, about defining resource efficiency, especially for uh, for energetic uh, metric, uh, we will focus more on the hardware agnostic part. So, uh, what is the impact of algorithms on a compiler on the energy uh, ratio? Um, but we will not address uh, what is uh, hardware dependent. So the, the, the approach is a, a benchmark uh, metric uh, which is based on a multi-criteria uh, system with a high-level uh, high level, uh, aggregation metric for end users uh, because we have observed that for, for the existing uh, initiative on, on, on quantum benchmark like CLOPS or quantum LINPAC or SuperMark QSUIT or QDC, it's uh, two uh, very technical metrics, for example, at QDCs are looking at uh, quantum Fourier transform. So uh, quantum Fourier transform is not very uh, relevant for end users. So we'll propose some very uh, also uh, technical metrics, but that will be aggregate in a more high level metric that makes sense for the end users. Uh, so it's uh, the, the, the Myriad is a tool uh, uh, where you can uh, use uh, initial metric, uh, where you have to uh, normalize this metric because you will aggregate different kind of metric uh, related to energy consumption or to uh, accuracy of computation. So they are not at the same uh, scale. So we have to normalize. Uh, and then we have to aggregate. And when you aggregate, you have to, uh, to manage the problem of uh, you will uh, you have to compare two solutions, uh, but some solutions are, are better on some metrics, on another solution on other metrics, and we have to take into account the preferences of end users. And Myriad tool has been developed to to take into account and to capture the preferences of the of the of the expert uh, on their, the skills of the expert to go to the consensus uh, between experts. 
Uh, and also uh, for the notation itself, uh, we want to be uh, the more uh, transparent that we can. Uh, so uh, we have a model which is intrinsically interpretable. So we can explain what is a notation and the ranking, which criteria, criteria has uh, influenced the uh, final uh, notation. And we could also explain the notation. Uh, so the main objective is to go to the consensus of QP uh, provider and end users on the on the model. So we try to compare uh, the performance of the quantum computer for the different problems that I explained on the physical simulation, optimization in our system on factorization. But also we could also compare different uh, comp uh, QPU for the same uh, the same problem. So just a focus on partner contributions. So Thales will work on the Myriad tool for uh, multi-criteria aggregation. Uh, so, uh, so I have already introduced this uh, this tool. Thales will be also involved in the metric elaboration. So uh, mainly for the problem of uh, linear sol system solving on uh, optimization problem. And uh, we will study uh, mainly uh, two uh, metrics. The first one will be related to uh, the noise. Uh, so we will define a metric related to the noise level uh, uh, on comput uh, computing accuracy. Uh, so what is the influence of noise level on the uh, final accuracy of the computation? And the second metric that we will use in the third phase of the study will be uh, the influence of compiler on, 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 on the on, on the results of the computation. CNRS, so CNRS is Alexia Ofev, uh, will address uh, energetic benchmark for gate-based uh, system. So she will focus on uh, metrics noise resources, MNR. Uh, so they will only address uh, uh, problem which are hardware agnostic, so what is the influence on energetic criteria uh, due to algorithms or compiler uh, in, the, in the quantum circuit uh, design or, or synthesis, for instance. And they will focus only on uh, quantum gate uh, QPU and uh, for linear system uh, solving. So obviously it is linked to the uh, quantum energy initiative uh, launched by uh, Alexia Ofev and uh, Olivier Izrati. Uh, and they are also in contact with Alt Triple E also to push uh, some standard. For CE, they will address uh, two uh, two prob uh, two uh, kind of problems. So the first one is for gate based on analog analog simulation of condensed matter inspired quantum many bo uh, many body models. So they will start with a, a, a small many body models because they need a analytic uh, solution to make some comparison. Uh, but they will look for many body, uh, many body fidelity of state preparation, uh, accuracy of dynamic simulation, accuracy of extracting physical quantity of interest. And uh, CAA will be also in involved in a uh, gate based on analog application for optimization, linear system solving, and integer factorization. But for factorization, we will focus on uh, Hamiltonian based uh, algorithm. And, and so they will also develop some criteria for, for, for that. And the, the last partner is Eviden uh, that will uh, is involved in the fast track that will be uh, details thereafter. And so they will define the Q score, which is, uh, has been developed for uh, max cut algorithm, but they will uh, extend it for uh, many body problem. Uh, and they make uh, the, the partner QPU accessible to the run test. Uh, and also, uh, they will uh, provide a QLM, uh, quantum learning machine, uh, and try to uh, to use QLM as a, as a pivot uh, to uh, define the, the test bed and uh, on we, we, to be able to process uh, the the metrics and the tests on different QPU. Uh, so I will I will uh, give the floor to to Anlis for the fast track. Yes. Thank you. Um, 
So the first part of the, the BAC uh, initiative is so the fast track because we already have a metric defined, which is the Q-score max cut. I'm going to explain a, a little bit about it. And um, so this first phase is a very interesting as an opportunity to introduce uh, the initiative to different kind of uh, potential partners and also to gather early um, uh, results during this phase on an existing metric. So Q-score is an application-oriented metric in the way that it solves a, um, an optimization problem, and we don't really care how you solve it. We don't care if uh, it's done by a machine which can natively uh, deal with the Hamiltonian or permanent or uh, do a phase shift gate uh, natively. And it has been designed to be generic, so, so that any kind of... Uh, 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 quantum machine can solve it, and um, and so that's why it's a good candidate to run it on various technologies and uh, and check that it makes sense and that we are comparing uh, efficiently different uh, very different uh, technologies. And uh, finally, what I want to underline here is that Q score max cut is just a metric. It defines a challenge and a way to score the, the result of it. But it doesn't say how you do it. And in order to validate this metric, we do have to run it. And we do have to solve the, the question of how do we solve this challenge for a given QPU? So that's why we are spending quite a lot of time during the fast track phase in uh, actually finding a way to solve this challenge on different QPUs. So what is Q-score max cut? Uh, first, the max cut problem is an optimization problem. So imagine you have a graph, so a set of vertices and edges. And what you want to do is to split the vertices into two different sets, so that it, such that it cuts the maximum number of edges of your graph. And so this is a complex problem on which we assume that we will have a quantum advantage uh, for big size of graphs. And uh, therefore, we can't check if a solution is right for every graph, classically. But the Q-score is smart in the way that uh, we do have a way to classically compute the average solution of a family of graph for a given size of graph. And therefore, we can pick randomly a set of graph within a family of, of size graph and execute it on a quantum machine and compare the results we get with the classical average solution. And this way, we have a scalable metric. And the Q-score itself is the maximum size of graphs that uh, the quantum machine can solve, can handle um, uh, with a respective, uh, respectable uh, accuracy. That's it. So in practice, as I said earlier, we have to write the implementation of how we do solve the max cut problem on a given uh, quantum machine. And that's what we are doing right now during the fast track. And it, it also raised new questions. Like if you have a machine which does uh, uh, treat um, some graphs very effectively, but is not able to, uh, to treat some specific graphs, how do you rate it? Uh, or also, uh, another question is that today, the, the size of graphs that we do deal with are quite small in the way that we do, do not have a quantum advantage yet. And for uh, hybrid solutions, we do not know yet how to assess um, uh, what is the classical participation in the computation and how to rate the global um, uh, machine. So now we have uh, contacted a list of partners, uh, uh, either QPU providers or uh, laboratories. And uh, in order to work on this fast track phase and uh, deploy the uh, Q-score max cut, and I'm not going to to list the to, to detail the whole list, but you have it here. And to be very uh, thin synthetic, you can see also a word map 
Uh, but what's important here is that you can see that we are addressing a wide variety of qubit technology, and that's what what, what is interesting here. We are treating an applicative uh, problem, a real end user problem, an optimization problem with various uh, kind of technology, and we aim to have a score for each of them. And so this is the world map of uh, all the person we have uh, contacted or uh, our future interest point for collaboration. And so finally, the work we have done so far is, uh, of course, the definition of the Q-score. It was done by Atas in 2021. Uh, also, TNO has already done uh, an implementation of the MaxCut problem, uh, the Q-score MaxCut, sorry, uh, on D-Wave, and we are uh, uh, lying on that. And also Pascal has done it uh, for their emulator. And uh, right now what we have achieved so far uh, with the help of Gwendola is that uh, we have a MaxCut implementation uh, for uh, their emulator. And we plan in the next uh, uh, weeks or months to run it on the uh, machine on the cloud. And um, we also have, uh, uh, we are also ongoing uh, uh, doing an implementation for the IQM emulator. Uh, and um, next steps also is to use uh, the, the MaxCut implementation done by Pascal on the emulator to run it on the real hardware as soon as it's available in the uh, TGCC. Also, the TGCC is, uh, is uh, waiting for uh, new photonic hardware, so we aim to uh, use uh, our knowledge to, to deploy the Q-score vaccine on that. And um, another thing is that we are also brainstorming with Alice and Bob on uh, uh, some new kind of problem that we could solve with the Q-score methodology. And finally, we are also spending quite a lot of time to formalize the engagement with all the partners you have seen listed previously. Okay, and finally, this is a call to anyone to participate. Back is a three-year project just starting. So please, if you want to participate, uh, join, contact Felicia or Frederick here at their uh, uh, email address. Thank you. So thank you very much. Maybe there are some questions in the audience. We have five minutes. So yeah, we'll repeat. Um, in the US, there is a kind of equivalent um, initiative like uh, old by QEDC, which is a, a kind of a similar organization. Uh, do you discuss with her? Will the will there be a part of uh, a kind of advisory board, advisory member, or, and you on your side? Are you involved in their initiatives? Yes. Okay. The, the, the long term objective of our project is to develop uh, an instrument of measurement which will be shared broadly. So uh, we are are starting discussions with uh, the other initiatives. Uh, at the international, uh, for example, you, you mentioned uh, QEDC, and also at the European level. So the, the, really the, the main objective is to, to get adoption and adhesion to this benchmarking tool uh, with a, a large number of partners. Yes, on, uh, we, we have a, an event uh, um, 11 of May uh, at Thales Research and Technology organized, co organized with LNE and uh, TerraTech. So we have invited uh, different uh, uh, initiatives, international initiatives. So uh, Rolish uh, will be, uh, will, uh, will participate for Germany, but we have also a TNO on Delft for Netherlands. Uh, we will have also ASTA for, for Singapore. Uh, we will have also uh, Recon for Japan, uh, uh, and also uh, Metric Q on uh, IBM for US, and uh, also the European Commission with DigiConnect uh, will be present at this event. 
on, uh, will uh, present their initiative on benchmark. And the objective is with, uh, with the project back is to organize this kind of seminar each year, also to exchange uh, with uh, our international uh, partners uh, for this kind of initiative. I have a question. So how do you ensure that these benchmarks and metrics do not like are fair and do not hinder innovation? I'm referring particularly to, for example, quantum machine learning, where it's kind of not clear on how to quantify or provide explainability of what's happening. It's about the. Could you uh, clarify your question? Is about. Uh, could you could could you clarify your question? Uh, okay. So basically, in quantum machine learning, for example, I mean, it's not really clear on how to build metrics and quantify the, the performance of the algorithms and to compare between them and I don't know. Uh, we, we will address different uh, different metric. Uh, so metric will be uh, related to accuracy of computation, uh, also uh, uh, related to the computation time, related to uh, the uh, to the energy consumption, and so uh, uh, this kind of problem is a multi metric problem. So uh, we we have pushed this uh, multi metric approach, but it is also pushed by uh, by uh, in Netherlands where they have also selected a multi metric approach but the problem uh, with multi metric approach is difficulty uh, when you have to compare different metrics because some computer will be uh, better for energy consumption but less uh, less better uh, so worse on uh, on accuracy and, and so it's how to compare uh, the same problem when you uh, want to, to select your car uh, you will uh, look at the color of your car, the, the speed of your car, the engine, and, and so it's why TLS has developed with, uh, especially from some uh, request of uh, French MOD, and uh, also we have also used this tool for NATO at uh, NATO level, is how to aggregate uh, different uh, metrics and uh, uh, to capture the preference of the users. Uh, for example, when you have different metrics, do you prefer that the, f the first uh, metric is good and the other are, are bad, or do you prefer the solution where the second metric is good and the two other are bad? Uh, and so uh, we have to capture these preferences. Uh, we are, the tool could detect some uh, inconsistency uh, in the evaluation of the end user because sometimes he says some things on one scenario and on the contrary on another one. Uh, and we could be uh, completely transparent. So we, we could explain the notation, uh, the final notation, which would be based on multimetric, will be explainable. So we could explain that we consider that this uh, QPU uh, is better than this one on this problem uh, because he has a better performance on accuracy and the expert of end user considers that it is more important for their application than the uh, consumption, for instance. Okay. Uh, any last question? Do you as well uh, provide uh, some feedback loop to improve the, the score or is it too, too, too difficult? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, we will use the results of the evaluation using uh, our uh, test bed in order to improve uh, the benchmarks themselves and also the, the metrics, uh, the criteria associated, yes. And maybe if, uh, for example, you have chosen uh, metrics like uh, uh, max cut or uh, number factoring or uh, chemistry if there are users that are interested in uh, for example uh, quantum machine learning maybe uh, you could also add some other problems uh, if the end users are interested in this uh, problems also 
Yes, because mainly uh, quantum uh, machine learning, it could be related to optimization uh, problem. Uh, we, there is no uh, learning uh, directly in quantum. So what, what is accelerated, it could be uh, non-supervised, for instance, uh, it, is, it is based on k-means, on the problem of optimization. So main, uh, main problem of quantum machine learning could be uh, could be reduced to optimization problem uh, that we could, uh, they could uh, so we could upgrade our benchmark to also to integrate uh, quantum machine learning. Yes, definitely. Uh, we are from the uh, end user perspective. So we are uh, listening to, to the needs, to their needs. And uh, uh, the idea is to have at the end um, a tool which will be open and so which will be adapted to the evolution of technology. Mm -hmm.